Wow, this sure is one giant CD. It's huge. What's it called? Lenoise. Oh, there you can see that. Quarantine Hearts is a back with you? Yes. Bring Lenoise, bring LaFunk. 2010's Lenoise. We made it to, I guess, the last decade. What yeah. does that mean, bring Lenoise? Oh, it's a bring, bring, bring the noise, bring the funk is like an old Broadway thing. So, this is an interesting album. Now, uh, Neil Young was inspired by the producer of this album, Daniel Lanois, who's very fa pretty famous producer, worked with U2 most famously, as mm. well as uh, recorded what was involved in the, uh, the Simply Saucer album that I love so much. What's Simply Saucer? Canadian proto-punk psych group from the 1970s. Uh, JT's like a that? big fan. I'm the biggest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so in any case, Daniel Lanois, he's, he's worked with, oh, he worked with Bob Dylan, he worked with uh, Brian Eno, of course. Um, so, so basically, he made this album called Black Dub. That was a dub album. And Neil Young heard that and decided he wanted to make something similar and Neil Young said I want to I want to make an album like that. Mm -hmm. And this is why you always listen to what he does cuz he he it's does just, fork in the road and then he does this. This is good. That's a cool cover by the way. Let's Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great good, cover. It's good though. This album's good. Well, fork in the road had good moments. I mean, this is, but my point is Neil Young is always trying new things. He's always trying something different. Well, yeah, and sometimes but, it hits and sometimes it doesn't. So Neil Young got in touch with Daniel Lanois, and they made this Daniel album. What? Daniel Lanois. Lanois was a... Re and I guess the noise... Yeah, Lanois is a play on Lanois. Lin yeah, he decided to call it Lanois after Lanois, Lanois. So, and this is only eight songs, and it's all Neil Young playing... It was supposed to be an acoustic album originally, but he decided, I think, based on what it said here, uh, one of the first songs he did was Hitchhiker. Mm -hmm. And he was going to do it acoustic, and he decided, you know what, let's do this electric. I think it was. That's interesting. Now, yeah, Hitchhiker, what do, Hitchhiker? what do we know about Hitchhiker? Yeah, we've talked about this. Uh, Where it's from? Um, it's from Hitchhiker. <laughs> That's true. So, yeah, very, uh, you got it. From the 1976 album Hitchhiker that we reviewed, that was shelved and buried, and no one had heard of at the time of this release. So this, this version of Hitchhiker is technically the first version that came out. When I was a hitchhiker. So, Hitchhiker, the album, the song, is on that album, and here's the first appearance of Hitchhiker in 2010 on this album, and it would be used in Like an Inca, uh, he would use some of the lyrics. Right, Like an Inca in Peru, the chorus to, there. For the song Like an Inca on The one in trans. It looks so, like that one of the members of Quarantine Hearts is a giant. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Does he want to walk like a giant? I would love to walk like a giant over the land. Oh, uh, you'll you understand what that is later. GT, we'll, you know that song. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. I want to focus on Lenoise. Yep, yeah, let's finish up talking about Lenoise right now. So he was recording the song Hitchhiker acoustically with Daniel Lanois and said, you know what, I want to use this uh, a Gretsch white, white Falcon with stereo pickups and two Fender Deluxe amps. And he got a whole other sound and then they decided to record the rest of the album like that. Was that such just hanging out in the studio? I'm not totally sure. I guess so. It must have been something he had. And it says both the guitar and voice were treated with delay effects and uh, an, a thing called the TC Electronics Fireworks. And they applied, Lenoir and his, his associate, uh, Howard, applied the effects in real time with Young able to hear the results through the monitor, monitoring system. So this is kind of like a Fripp and Eno, Frippertronics style Frip it. Uh, <laughs> manipulation. <laughs> Rip it. And uh, this is a good quote. It said, according to this guy Howard, the associate producer, when you stood in the center of the room, it was the best sound you ever heard. It was incredible. We had these speakers going at full tilt, and when you put your hands on the walls, they were shaking. Cool. It was almost earthquake material. Neil was pushing us, saying, hey, guys, that's great. Just take it to the next level. Give me more <laughs> of that. That's what apparently he said. Like, that's not loud enough. Uh, so that after recording, went in there with most of the songs and caught certain words and phrases and dubbed them. So that's how this whole album is. And the sound of his guitar is like thunderous. It's it like is. super, cool. super um, monstrous. <laughs> Say. And there's some weird sounds in Angry World. That's got like, uh, what was that in there? Those are those manipulations that they were doing. Here's the inside cover, by the way, which is you could, there's Daniel Lenoir. Mr. Lenoise. Here, Lenoise. And the other guy's yeah, his Mr. name Lenoise. is Mark Howard. Um, 
So it sounds like maybe this is going to be gimmicky, and you could, I guess, people who are detractors of this album might say it is gimmicky. Gimmicky means like, oh, it's just the songs aren't good. They were just using these effects and this stuff to make it sound cool. But the songs are really good. And Hitchhiker, even though that's an old song, we have a bunch of other new ones here. Love and War, excellent. Um, yep. Love and War is a great song. I love the first song, Walk With Me. Yeah, I also like uh, Peaceful Valley Boulevard. Peaceful Valley Boulevard is one of two acoustic songs on this. One day shots rang out in the Peaceful Valley. Peaceful Valley Boulevard is like seven minutes long. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, it only eight songs, 37 minutes, pretty short, Rumble economical. In? Tight. 38, actually. Rumblin' was the last song, and that was a weird one. Yeah. They all have that, that whole thing going on, but I Neil Young sounds like, like, a fragile, like, the, his voice sounds sort of fragile, I love that, yep. and his guitar just sounds kind of crack. He cracks in some points, and yeah. he's like, when that happens. I wish I don't, yep. I wish I bought the record. Now, the record was like 40 bucks, and I was like, that's ridiculous, but now it's like 120, mm. so I blew it there. You blew it. But I got this nice uh, Digipack CD. So, right. it is, um, it is this shaky is a time. strong album. So good. This is the best album of since like Seuss with Angels, I think, mm -hmm. is what I'll say. That's my, that's my pre-shaky. You're pre-shaky? Shaky. All right. What do you think, Silas? What are your shakies on this? So I wanted to say that thank you, uh, Grandma Camille and Victoria from New York City, for let for letting me borrow, borrow keep this um It's a very cool uh, magnifying, magnifying glass. glass. That is very nice of them. Uh, eight shakies. Okay. So solid. I have eight and a half shakies on this. This is a strong Neil Young record. And it's, it's in a sense, I'd love to hear, you know, some drums and some other instruments going on. But you know what? This thing, 37, 38 minutes of this is fantastic. Yep. I'm going to eat shakies on this one. Mm -hmm. um, also, I you're always it's interesting when you say like you want to hear some drums. I, I like it just as it is, in the same way that I like Hitchhiker just as it is. I like this just like it is, and I like always just the round numbers. I do. I like a nice round number. You're giving good perspective, sure. But I think I think it, it is what it is, and I like it like this. I like Hitchhiker as it was, and I think like the things I like about this are some of the things you already brought up. Like I love I love the way his voice is. The guitars sound amazing. Um, it, the guitars are kind of reminiscent of Dead Man, which we know oh, I love. Yeah, I was thinking that. Good yeah, point. Very similar. It sounds like this could be like the, the instrument it, it or the absolutely song could be. Of Dead the, Man. Yes, and that's what I was about to good say. Call. But um, it it's like it's as if Dead Man were realized in song format. Um, but I think and like the acoustic parts are great. I mean, I suppose if I if I wasn't going to stick to solid shakies, I, I could have gone up a notch, but I wanted to stick with an eight. But mm -hmm. I think it's I I really liked it a lot. It was surprising and really good, um, and I like I like all the effects they're doing on it. And I also think yeah. just in general, like when we see like Neil Young sort of untouched and raw, I always really really enjoy that yeah, because I think that sometimes he is marred by production, mm -hmm. but this was kind of in the moment production that came out really cool. Suits him. Yeah. yeah. He benefits from sort of raw in the moment. Absolutely. Sound. This is his, that's that guitar, the uh, Epiphone. Or nice sorry, guitar. Gretsch. Good looking Suit Gretsch. Fender Deluxe amps. Apparently, I love the idea that they were like blown out. In there. Yeah, and like, blast oh, him. Kick <laughs> it up a notch up. Kick it up. Kick it up a notch. All right. Corky it's a fun Arts record. We'll be to back with you on the next album that's not like any other Crazy Horse album called Americana. Oh, All right. Americana. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be some old time music. It might, might, might not be good. You know how I be... feel about the old time. <laughs> uh, okay. All, right. All right. Goodbye. Okay.